Bloomberg Markets Balance of Power. I'm Julia Chatterley. Now back in 1990, junk bond king Michael Milken was one of the most powerful people on Wall Street when he pleaded guilty to securities fraud and spent 22 months in prison. Now he's a 71-year-old philanthropist who runs a prominent annual conference. This week, wealth management executive David Bonson sent a plea to President Donald Trump asking him to pardon Milken. David joins us now. He's the founder and CIO of the Bonson Group. David David, great to have you on the show. Thank you, Mayor. Of all the things you could have asked President Donald Trump, why this? You know, of all the different areas out there that maybe I would like to have addressed to him if I got the opportunity, tax reform and the need to maybe change his temperament and lower the tweet volume and all those types of things, those are things I think people say to him all the time. Most of the policy things that I like to talk to him about are things that are in the mainstream of conservative thinking, where I happen to come from ideologically. This subject is not something that he's hearing about, and it's something Something that I think is very, very important. You know, there are people looking at this and they go, hang on a second, this guy broke the law. He was sentenced to 10 years, he only served 22 months. Again, why would you choose this as a, a touch button subject? I, I don't believe that anybody would say that he broke the law who's actually studied the subject thoroughly that could easily quantify what laws he broke. I don't really believe that the judge even knew what laws he exactly broke. Milken ended up pleading guilty when they extorted or uh, leveraged his brother's arrest against him when he knew that they were going to go after his brother. That's when Michael Milken ended up pleading guilty. But ultimately, most people, as you bring up, in this sort of public sentiment believe he went to jail for inside trading. He most certainly did not. Most people believe he created this high-yield bond world that ripped off a lot of people. He most certainly did not create a capital structure that ripped off people. He created a capital structure. He created a capital structure that now we see today Tesla utilizing in their growth phase. I think that Milken should be getting credit, not condemnation. I think the, the jury is going to be permanently out on, on whether or not he's innocent or guilty, so I won't push you further on that. But what's the incentive for, for President Trump here to go, okay, this is a high-profile guy, a banker, I'm going to pardon him. I mean, for his supporters in particular, they would have their head in their hands over this, wouldn't they? Uh, yeah, well, I'm not sure that they would. I think that the uh, Sheriff Joe pardon will definitely go down as the most controversial pardon of his tenure. But see, I'm not asking President Trump to do this for political benefit to him. I'm completely agnostic about what is in it for President Trump. So why the timing? Why uh, one week after Joe? I think that this week there is now a refocus on what exactly the purpose of a pardon pardon is. And maybe the country needs to have a greater conversation. We've had some controversial ones in our nation's history, and obviously we think back to President Ford pardoning President Nixon. But um, in terms of the symbolic value of a pardon of Michael Milken to sort of purge ourselves from that, uh, in my mind, egregious prosecutorial abuses of the 19, late 1980s, I think it would have tremendous effect in reinforcement that we stand behind our capital markets and that we no longer want to tolerate these sort of broad and class envy driven prosecutions. You've never met Milken? I have never met him. What would you gain? What do you gain by doing this? Um, you know, it's funny. A few people have asked me that. I have to tell you that um, I gain absolutely nothing from doing this. I truly believe this. I admit I'm kind of an obsessive person. I got <laughs> obsessed with this topic. I've read every book one could read. I did not enter the subject and my study of it uh, sort of with a presupposition that Michael Milken was innocent as I went further and further into it. But I'll tell you the two people that most sort of persuaded me that there were some real abuses that went on and those were the prosecutors that brought the case and I think of course the former Giuliani, who I hold in very high regard, who is an outspoken advocate of a pardon of Michael Milken, who he prosecuted. And I think of the prosecutor who worked the case, John Carroll, who admits to all sorts of, of issues that went on there. I believe that fundamentally what's in it for me is that I truly want us to get past the class envy rhetoric, demonization for symbolic value, and instead move to a system based on enterprise and justice. You said it, it was a period of class envy run amok yeah. during that period. Period. I can't help feeling that actually a pardon in this case would actually just incite those flames. Well, um, that's that very well could happen. Pardon for one of his friends. The the reality is is that I don't believe this is not a partisan issue. Um, to my knowledge, Michael Milken's in a very different political space than I am. Um, over the years, President Clinton was lobbied very hard to pardon Michael Milken, primarily from more left-wing and centrist Democrats. I don't think that this would divide uh, the country along partisan lines or ideological lines. I think this should be done because it's the right thing to do.
Interesting, David. We'll wait and see. Have you had any response from the president very quickly? I have not had a response from the president yet. Do you expect yet. one? I do expect one, yes. Oh, interesting. David, great to have you on the show. David Bonson, founder and CEO of the Bonson Group there. Now sign up.